All right, what's up, everybody? We're back with another edition of Everyday Hoops. Hope you guys are having a good one. Today, we're going to be talking about the Oklahoma City Thunder. Last night, they had a really good one against the Boston Celtics. We're going to talk about this team. Is this team actually a true contender? Like, they're young and stuff like that, but is this team actually a true team we have to worry about in the playoffs and stuff like that? We're going to talk all about that here in today's video. Thank you guys for the views on the videos and the shorts recently. I really appreciate it. If you like the content around here, consider subscribing, like, turn notifications, do all stuff like that. I'd really appreciate it. We live that a lot. We're on the road to 500 subscribers. So if you like the content around here, hit the subscribe button. I'd really appreciate it a whole lot. And uh, yeah, don't waste any more of your time. Let's get right into it. So we'll start talking about last night's game first. Uh, the Thunder and the Celtics faced off. And the Thunder got a good win. Thunder got the win 127 123. It was a close first half. And in the third quarter, the Thunder put up 40 on the Celtics in the third quarter. Celtics did have a great comeback. Uh, as the Thunder got off to a good start the first like few minutes of the fourth quarter. But the Celtics had a really good comeback, made it a close game. But the Thunder eventually closed it out. They win 127 123. They snapped the Celtics' six game winning streak. And now they have the longest winning streak in the league. They won five in a row. They're up to 23 and nine. They're second in the West, only a game behind the Minnesota Timberwolves. Uh, team stats for that game, OKC shot 53% from the field, Boston shot 46%. The Thunder hit 18 threes, while the Celtics hit 15 threes. Uh, OKC forced 14 Boston turnovers as well. For the Thunder, Shea Gillis Alexander, 36, 6, and 7, with a steal, shot 14 for 22 from the field. Uh, he had a big third quarter as well. Uh, Josh Giddy, 23, 8, and 6, one of his best games of the season. He had four threes. Uh, J-Dub, 16 points, three steals, two blocks. Chet Holmgren at 14 points, 7 assists, and 4 blocks, including hitting a couple big threes late in the fourth quarter. Isaiah Joe also had 10 points, hit two threes off the bench. It was just a great win from OKC. You know, um, they've done this the past few days now. I did a short actually the other day talking about the Denver Nuggets, where they beat the Denver Nuggets big. Um, they've just, they've been really, really good this season. They've been one of the best teams this year. Of course, they are right now, what, 23 and 9. They're second in the West, only a game behind the Minnesota Timberwolves right now. And they're balling. You look at some of the wins they have. I mean, yeah, as of recently. This isn't even just like like a whole stretch. As of recently, they're 10-2 and two in their last 12 games. In those games, they beat the Warriors in overtime. That was a tough game to beat the Jazz. They beat the Nuggets twice in that stretch, one by one point. And then the other day, uh, last Friday, they beat them by, what, was that 26 points, I want to say? 119-93, uh, to 93, they beat them. Uh, they beat the LA Clippers by almost 20. They beat the Timberwolves by 23. So, yeah, they beat the Timberwolves by 23. They beat the Knicks by 9. They beat the Nets the other day. And then last night, they beat the Boston Celtics. So they beat three of the best teams in the NBA in the past week. Like, in this past week, they've on a five-game win streak, they, three of those teams, Timberwolves, Nuggets, Celtics, are, like, three of the best, three of the top, like, five-ish teams in the NBA. You know? So, and they've handled them. It's not like they've been just, like, oh, game-winning shots and stuff like that. Like, they've beat them. I mean, they beat the Timberwolves by 23, they beat the Nuggets by over 20, and they beat the Celtics last night by 4, even though it felt like a little bit of a wider gap, but just because Boston did have a good run in the last few minutes of the fourth to kind of make it a lot more competitive. But, yeah, man, they've been handling business. They've been handling business. Yeah, they're 10-2 and two in their last 12 games. The only two lost, they lost to the Kings, and they lost to the Lakers. But besides that, I mean, they've been balling. You know, I talked about this in my Power Ranking video I did the last today. which if you missed that, you can go back and watch it, which this, I kind of got the idea for this video, is, like, I ranked them. They're a top-five team in the NBA. They've been a top-five team in the NBA. And looking at some of their, like, numbers and stuff like that, like, looking at some of their team stats and stuff, they it's ridiculous, you know? As of right now, they are a top-five offense and top-five defense, um, which is they're one of three teams with the Celtics and the 76ers. They are top five in both. They have the number five offense. The number three defense, which actually is different because last day's power game, they were the six offense and the two defense, and now that's kind of fallen a little bit. But still, I mean, top five in both, third in net rating. You know, and then looking at some of their, like, traditional stats, they're fourth in points per game. They put up 121.5 points per game. They're third in field goals made, but they're not even top ten in field goal attempts. You know, they actually don't take a lot of shots, but they make shots, and they're third in field goal percentage. They shoot almost 50%. As a team, and three pointers, it's not like they go crazy on the threes. They're tenth three pointers made. They're only seventeenth in attempts, but they have the best three point percentage in the NBA. They shoot thirty nine percent from three as a team. So they're not a high volume offense. Not like they're taking, you know, like thirty five threes a game or something like that. They take what thirty three, but it's not like they take like thirty eight or some of the threes a game. But they're just making them, knocking them down, and they get to the free throw line. Uh, they are actually not in the top ten 
at free throw attempts, but they're number one in free throw percentage. They shoot 85% from the free throw line. So they're making opportunity they're making good of their opportunities at the line as well. Uh, the only thing that really takes this team away is not, that the team isn't good at is rebounding. The 28th rebounding team, they're one of the worst offensive rebounding teams in the league. And defensive rebounding, they're about average. So that goes to kind of below average rebounding team. Which, I mean, it makes sense because they're small. Really, besides Chet, they don't really have, like, a lot of bigs. Like, Jalen Williams is their backup center, but he's only, like, 6'7", you know? So it's a bigger team. It's just not a big team in the sense of, like, they have a lot of 6'10", 6'11", 7-foot guys. It's really just Chet and then game rebounding, you know? But, yeah, they're top 10 in assists. They're fourth in turnovers, so they don't turn the ball over a whole lot as well. They're fourth in their top five in steals and number one in blocks as well. So, yeah, offensively and defensively, they're doing it. You know, and this team has just been put together so well. Of course, the last few years they've always had, they've had a lot of picks in the past years, made some moves, and now those picks are finally starting to pay off, and they're finally showing, they're coming together, and they're showing like how great they are. You know, Shea Gilders Alexander got him in the Paul George trade. He was a he broke out last year. Um, he was amazing last year, and this year he's been even better. He's in the MVP conversation right now. He's probably top five in the MVP conversation. Has to be. He's averaging 31, 5, and 6 with leading the league with 2.6 steals. He's shooting 55% from the field, 33% from three, 90% from the free throw line. He's been absolutely balling, especially these recently. Especially in the last like few games. His back back years, he's averaging over 30 points per game, by the way, which is crazy. But yeah, you look at the stretch he's had in the past what 13 games. In the past 13 games, he's averaging 33 points, five and a half rebounds, six and a half assists, and almost three steals. He's shooting 56% from the field, 87% from the free throw line. Yeah, in these games, he's had 30 in every game except one or two in the past 12. Look at this little stretch. He's had 33, 38, 30, 43, 25, then 30, 31, 34, 34, 36, 40, 24, 36 last night. Like, he, he's been, he's amazing. He's amazing. He's one of my favorite players to watch. And he's a young star. He's gonna be, he's in the MVP conversation. You know, is he gonna be an all star starter? Maybe. You know, maybe he might be an all star starter. I don't know. It's gonna be tough because you have Steph Curry and Luka Doncic. And they got a lot of votes and stuff, but Shea Gilles Alexander, man, he's great. Uh, Chet Holmgren, right now, he's probably the rookie of the year. He's come in, he's impacted winning in just an insane level, even though Victor Webbyama has been really good so far, too. And stats-wise, it looks towards Wemby's way, but Chet Holmgren has impacted winning big. Like, I knew Chet was going to come in, and he was going to be a big piece for the Thunder, but I don't think anybody expected him to be this good already, especially coming off a big foot injury last year, missing the entire rookie year, coming in kind of fresh, right from Summer League, and coming into a team that had a little bit of expectation not saying they were supposed to be a championship contender but you know last year they kind of broke out as a team only were one game away from making the playoffs and now it's like all right we expect them to be kind of in that same position again maybe even better be a playoff team and they've just skyrocketed skyrocketed from they're supposed to be maybe an, another playing team and stuff to one of the best teams in the nba and chet Holmgren has been a big part of that he's been a missing piece last year their missing piece was they didn't really have any big man play you know, they had Jalen Williams, who did a solid job, but he's not a true starting, like, big man, you know? Chad Holmgren has come in, he's done, he's impacted them in so many ways. So far, he's averaging 17-7-2 with almost three blocks. He's shooting 54% from the field, 40% from three, 83% from the free throw line. You have your center shooting 50-40-80 while averaging almost three blocks and 17 points. Like, he, he's been ridiculous. He's been ridiculous. He's, probably, he's my vote for Rookie of the Year. He's probably got to be Rookie of the Year right now. He, again, he's impacted winning on an insane level already, and he's only 21 years old, and it's really his first season. You know, so I can't even imagine what the next few years are going to be like for him. But, yeah, Shea and Chet really is the core group. That's the backbone of this OKC team. But they have so many other young pieces that are great. Jalen Williams, J-Dub, has been great. He broke out last year as the number 12 overall pick. Not really well-known coming into the season but then he kind of broke out was like what second or third in rookie of the year had a great year and he's been even better this year he's averaging 18 3 and 4 with a steal he's shooting 52 percent from the field almost 43 percent from three 85 percent from the free throw line he's been efficient uh, gets to his spots easy i like his game because he, he's also become kind of the guy where in the fourth quarter of course all defending all opponents know sga is going to get the ball so they've kind of used Jalen williams is kind of like all right shay's getting double team they're focusing on shay all right here j-dub you, you do it. And he's had a couple games where he's closed out games, you know, because their defense is so worried about Shea getting his bucket that they're not worried about Jalen Williams. Jalen Williams is a capable bucket getter as well, especially in that little mid-range 
free throw line area, that little pull-up mid-range jumper. Like, I don't think I've seen him miss that this season. You know, he's been efficient shooting from the field and from three as well. Um, do, doing all the little things too, rebounding, making the extra pass. Defensively, he's there. Like, he's super, super, super good. Jalen Williams is super, super good. He's going to be in the league for a long time. Just a really good basketball player. You know, uh, Josh Giddy hasn't had the best season. Obviously, on and off the court, <laughs> hasn't had the best you know, season. But he's still a very solid point guard. You know, that does his thing here and there. Last night, he was huge. He hit, what, four threes in that game. He was big. Lou Dorsman been having a really good year. He's shooting 41% from three. He's averaging 11 points per game while also guarding some of the team's best players, you know, defensively. But also this bench, this bench unit has really started to pick it up. Isaiah Joe has been one of the best, like, plus-minus guys you look around the league. Isaiah Joe's been near the top. You know, last year, he was kind of, he was a second-round pick for Philly a few years ago. Kind of just was on the bench, not really doing much. He gets released, goes to OKC last year. He kind of became a rotational player. And this year, he's been their sixth man. He's been even better. You know, he's averaging nine points per game. He's shooting 45% from the field, 42% from three. He's a sniper from out there. You know, you can't leave him open. He's going to knock it down. Kaysen Wallace, their lottery pick from this year, he's coming and impacted the game. Well, he's shooting the lights out. He's only averaging, what, six points a game, but he's shooting 53% from the field, 43% from three. He's not taking a lot of shots. When he is taking shots, he's making them. You know, and on the defensive end, he holds his own as well. That's what he really came into out of college as like good defensive point guard that also can ball handle and shoot a little bit but he's been kind of just like a he's been kind of a three and d guard in a sense and he's doing it really well right now uh kenneth williams is back after missing a lot of time early in the year he's been solid aaron wiggins comes in and makes plays here and there the other jalen williams comes in and you know takes charges makes hustle plays and stuff like that like this thunder team has been really good and shout out to mark dignall he gets a lot of credit as well he was a finalist for coach of the year last year. He's probably going to be a finalist for coach of the year this season as well. Uh, he's really come in, put this team together, has them. God, they're just confident. They're confident. They look like a team. They don't look like a team that's like, you know, um, that's this young. Where the only player that really plays on this team that's older is Kenneth Williams is 29. But when else? Shea's 25. J-Dub's 22. Chad, Josh Giddy 21. Lou Dorff 24. And all these guys really haven't been in the spot. Like, Lou Dort's been in the playoffs once. With, he locked up James Harden for a playoff series. Shea's been in the playoffs once in, as a rookie for the Clippers. Besides that, no one, like Isaiah Joe's been on the bench for playoff games, but he's never actually played in there. Kenneth Williams was at the Pelicans for a little while, and they were kind of successful. But none of these guys, none of these players on this team really have, like, deep playoff experience at, at all, really. But they still they look confident. They look like a team that comes out, and every night they think we're going to win this game. You know, so yeah, they they've been great. It's been a f really fun watch, and now the real question is, do we consider them as true contenders? I feel like the only thing that takes us that separates us from not putting them in the upper echelon of contenders is just their experience and their age. All a lot of these guys haven't been in this position before. You know, we haven't seen a lot of these guys play in the playoffs yet. You know, I think that's the only, that's really the only thing that sets us from taking from, you know making them contenders because i feel like this is any other team with a little bit of experience we were calling them contenders looking at them numbers wise like stats wise advanced numbers watch them on the court like their team that they, they really move and play like a team that can win maybe not a championship but like can go far because they do it on the offensive end they do it on the defensive end which is big as well if you have a good you have a really good defense you know you're gonna be able to survive in some games and win some playoff games but on the offense they have cable guys where they can go out and put up 130 you know Shea can give you 40 if you need to Chen Hungry can hit a couple big shots they have guys their shooting has been magnificent they have Lou Dor, Isaiah Joe J-Dub you know they like Isaiah Joe can pop off for four or five threes off the bench Lou Dor can pop off and hit four or five threes J-Dub can pop off and hit 20 go hit 25 points Chet can come out and give you 22 with a couple blocks and rebounds as well like, they just have so many. And then they have guys like Jay, the other Jalen Williams, Kenneth Williams, Aaron Wiggins that come in and do the little things, like the loose balls, the extra possessions, like get down the get down the ground, get an extra steal. Like, they do stuff like that. Like, th this team has really it all. You know, this team has it all. It's been constructed really well. And, yeah, they we might have to consider them contenders. I don't know where I stand on that yet. Just because, I mean, again, we they're so young and... You know, they don't have much playoff experience. So usually teams like that, we don't really put them in, you know, the high contention ranks because, again, we haven't seen it yet. We don't know what to expect from them when they get there. 
but I mean this team has just been this this team is really really good man this team is really really good and I won't be surprised if they do knock out maybe a more experienced team maybe if they go against the Phoenix Suns in a playoff series you know I'm not saying I would pick them absolutely all right but like you know right now they would play the Dallas Mavericks if the season were to end right now they would play the Dallas Mavericks in the first round that's a tough matchup because if Luka Doncic is on your team you're gonna have a chance to win any series we've seen that you know before but OKC's got the I think the potential and got the you know stuff to take down the Mavericks I feel like you know like this this OKC team is really really good really good if you're not watching them and not keeping up with them man you're doing a disservice to yourself because this team is fun this team is really good they're gonna get really good wins they're gonna be a really good team this uh, this season and I can't wait to see what the like the end looks like what the playoffs look like you know because I assume they're probably gonna be around the top because unless they go on like a big losing streak or have a big injury, which hopefully not, I'm hoping not. But as long as that doesn't happen, they're probably going to be a top seed in the Western Conference. You know, so I'm very excited to see who they play, what the playoffs will look like. But for right now, that's a long way down the line. But for right now, I'm just enjoying watching this really fun young team. But yeah, that's going to be it for today. Hope you guys enjoyed. Once again, if you enjoyed the content, consider subscribing, like, turn notifications, and stuff like that. I really appreciate it. It really out a lot. Uh, link to my Twitter, TikTok, stuff like that in the description down below. I don't know if I said that at the beginning of the video. But uh, yeah, I'll see you guys tomorrow.